my name is Natalie, also known as Our Daily Stitches, and welcome back to my floss tube. This is floss tube video number seven, and my channel is mostly about cross stitch. I do some crochet and some knitting as well, but welcome everyone. Um, thank you for visiting if you're new, thank you for coming back if you're old, and Happy New Year! It's 2022! Uh, I am filming this on January 2nd, 2022. I know this video is just a slight bit late. We got back um, from all of our holiday travels on Friday at like, you know, six o'clock in the evening. And so I was very, very tired. Um, I tried to do this video Saturday and I like sat down, I had things set up and I was just like, I just don't feel like doing this video. And I didn't think it would be very good if I tried to like, forced myself to make a video when I wasn't in the mood, so I was just like, I'll just wait till Sunday, and now I feel a lot more in the mood for it, so hopefully it'll be much better than, yes than um, yesterday's attempt. So, um, yeah, we visited a lot of people. We had a Christmas. I got a Christmas stitchy gift, so I will show that to you guys. Um, yeah, just visiting lots and lots of family. Um, having a good time. I had some awful cedar allergies when we went um, further out west where there's lots of cedar trees. I am horribly allergic to cedar pollen and I spent the last like all of Friday and Thursday just like puffy eyed sneezing, um, runny nose insanity but I f am feeling much better now. Um, I started feeling better honestly as soon as we got back home because where I live there's still cedar trees, but basically like, I looked up the pollen count for like where we were in West Texas and it was like 24,000 grains per cubic meter. And here it's like 145 grains per cubic meter. So it's much, much better. Um, and today I, yeah, I spent like Saturday getting it all out of my system, but now I feel fine. So hopefully I'm not sneezing all over this episode. And um, yeah, so I feel better now though. All right, so. Let's get into what I have done since the last time I saw you guys. The first thing that I had was I took this with me on our travels and I had a finish of um, the Frosted Pumpkin Stitcheries Cozy Cafe Club. And this I used all of the called for fabric and thread and everything. Um, I got the kit from Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery at the beginning of the year when they started the sale. And the only thing that I did differently on this is um, I changed the um, the chai right here. They had like a different cup um, that I, I liked it, but I um, wanted something a bit different. So I just kind of made up this little tile pattern instead. So I have a finish of that. And this is my last finish of 2021. So there you go. I don't know what I'm going to do with this yet. I think I'll probably just um, like frame it and put it in the kitchen or something I think would be cute. Um, it doesn't really, again, our, our style of stuff is not really like super cutesy like that, but you know, it can go in the kitchen, it's fine. Um, so, okay, what else did I have? Okay, the next thing I had was a present from my husband. He got me this, um, this sweet kit, and here's a picture of what it will look like. It's called Sterling Estates. The designer is, hold on, let me see here, oh boy, I didn't bring like the big thing, it's M-E-R-E-J-K-A, and they're like, they're a Polish company and they make kits. Um, so here this one is, it's so pretty. This is like my dream, I want to live in this house right here out in the middle of the country, that would be so nice. So he got me that, and I started it while we were, um, while we were visiting everyone. And I started in the top left hand corner and so I just have some of like the sky done up there. And this is, um, the kit came with 16 count, this kind of like pale blue Ada, which I honestly really like because a lot of kits seem to come with, um, with 14 count Ada and call for like two strands over one, which I don't particularly like that coverage. I like two over one more on like uh, 32 count linen or 16 count Ada. So I'm really enjoying this though. There's a lot of like half stitches. There's a lot of blends. Um, I, I actually really like these types of kits. I think like the difference in strand numbers and the half and the full cross stitches and 
all that stuff I think it makes like an amazing difference and kind of like textures everything and makes it look realistic and I also this is my first of their kits to get and they come with these really nice like um plasticky um thread like the thread is already pre bobbined on there for you which is really nice um my only complaint is I wish this was cardboard like the Riolis one so that it wasn't like, I, I don't know, it feels like plastic to me. Um, like the Riolis ones because, you know, it makes me kind of sad to have like plastic and just have to like throw it in the trash after I'm done, but, um, or find a way to recycle it, but yeah. So I really do like when they come pre-wound like this instead of, um, you know, just like in those big bunches where you have to sort out like what is very light brown and light brown and brown and medium dark brown and all of those different things. So that's really nice not to have to deal with that. Um, the next thing that I worked on while I was um, while I was traveling, this is one of the things my mother-in-law got me, and this was Nora Corbett's um, Rudolph, one of her Christmas couriers. And I got some pretty decent progress on him. I got all of um, all of his like body done down here below the wreath that's around his neck. I got all the bow done. I started on um, on the beading. So I'm really enjoying um, this. I did do one conversion so well I say one. I'm using a, a Rainbow Gallery Petite Treasure Braid instead of the called for Krynik. And then I'm also, instead of, um, there's like a red Krynik that's called for in this bow, but I just thought it would look kind of weird to just have like a sparkly thread in the middle of all of these like, you know, normal matte threads. So I picked out a color and I forget what it is now. It's 38 something, like 3810 or something like that. Um, but I picked that out and used that instead of the red cry neck for here, um, just because I think it looks better being like all matte instead of having a sparkly thread in there. Um, but yeah, I'm really enjoying that. The stitching up really, really quickly. Um, I think Nod's X Stitch did this one, and I think she's doing all of them actually. But uh, she stitched it in like, I don't know, it was like a week or two or something. But it does stitch up really, really fast. And it's super cute and I'm enjoying it greatly. Um, okay. Next thing that I have is I started Esther Blackwood 1853. This is um, the 2022 Hands Across the Sea uh, Stitch Along. And I got this from Traditional Stitches. It's an exclusive for them. And I just have the smallest of starts. And I do want to try and get this finished within the year and like keep up with the sow. But I just have this small little start, upper left hand corner of the design. Um, just this little, yeah, little bit of the border done. Some of the alphabet. I'm really loving this. I'm using um, 46 count milk coffee by XG Designs. And then I'm using all of the called for DNC colors. I like this one and this is my first time working on 46 count and so it's um it's pretty small I, I'm surprised I can still see it okay without like a magnifier or anything um that's the one good thing I have trash vision actually um I'm wearing contacts but my vision is awful <laughs> um but I am nearsighted so at least I can see things that are close to me which is great for stitching I just can't see you know anything more than like a foot from my face when I'm not wearing contacts or glasses so it's fine um, okay the next thing I have some more whips that I've been working on to show you guys but first I wanted to show you guys my I modified my whip go board a little bit because I looked back at it and I realized I was missing um, I realized I was missing the Chris Mons sampler. That one with like the little yellow um, ornaments that I'm doing. I didn't bring them over here with me, but I realized that that one I forgot to put on my board, and so I had to. I had two squares that were duplicates on my Whipco board, and so I replaced those with um, the Chris Mons sampler, and then also with. Um, that Sterling Estates kit that my husband gave me since I started that, I went ahead and put that on here too. So now 
I have 25 whips. Um, Esther Blackwood is not on the board because I have like another plan of how I'm going to finish her. Like I want to keep up with the sow. And so I didn't want to put her on the board. Um, so I have 24 whips on the board and 25 in total. And the numbers that got called for, um, for January were two and 19. And for me, that is, um, the funny bunnies which I'll show you here in a second and then songs of the season so yeah and I decided I've seen a couple other people do this I'm just gonna like highlight the outside when they get called and then when I finish the goal I'm going to like just fill in the whole box with highlighter so I've been working on this a little bit and this for whip go was my number uh, my number 19 and this is the Prairie Schooler Songs of the Season. I have all of the ornaments finished besides Peace on Earth and Jolly Old St. Nick. I have not started the Jolly Old St. Nick one, but I have worked, ooh, still have a thread on here. Try to put that off to the side so it's not so annoying. Um, That's just going to have to do for now. Um, I kept working on this. I don't remember how much I had done of this last time I showed you guys. I had done like all the way down here and then I had to frog it because I realized I messed up. Um, but I started, I finished the roof. I did start like the house and stuff and I started this like outside border. Uh, so I need to um, this month finish this one and then also do the jolly old St. Nick one. And then they'll be done in time for next Christmas. <laughs> um. So yeah, there's my first whip go goal for this month. And then my second whip go goal, which was on Bunny Bunnies by Riolas, is this right here. And what I have done right now is I have this little bunny done, this uh, like tan orange one right here. And my goal is to at least do this gray bunny right here this month. And I might work, depending on how much I get done, like I might work a bit into the foliage and stuff too around this, um, just to get some of that done. But I at least want to get this little gray bunny done. And what I have done, there. Okay, there we go. Um, on that is, like I said, I have this bunny done and then I did a bit of the foliage around that. Um, I have a bit of the gray bunny done. I haven't worked on this this month yet, but I did already have a little bit of that done. Um, so yeah, my goal is to finish this gray bunny, like this area right here. So we'll see, hopefully I can get that done. And I am trying to get my whip go goals done like in the month that they're called, but at the same time, if I don't get it done in the month that it's called or I get one goal like done early, like if I just really wanna work on something that, you know, didn't get called that um, like that month and I end up completing the goal like I'm not you know, I'm not gonna beat myself up about it I'll just go with it I do want to get all these goals done before the end of the year preferably and that, like I said I do want to try to stick with you know getting them done the month that they're called as best I can so we'll see how that goes because I have two whip go goals a month and then trying to keep up with Esther Blackwood because I broke her up into parts so that I can hopefully stay on track and have it done by the end of the year. Um, okay, and the next thing I want to show you guys is a fully finished object, which if you follow me on Instagram, you've probably already seen this, but I framed my Templar prophecy <laughs> from Long Dog Samplers and oh boy, is it large. Am I even going to be able to fit this in? Probably not, honestly. Huh. Okay, we're going to have to like... Oh, there we go. Kind of. Kind of. Yes. Okay, yeah, there you go. It's all done. I framed it. I got a... Um, I ordered a custom frame online and um, framed it doing lacing, which my lacing is not that great, but uh, there's the back of it if you're interested in what that looks like. Um, but yeah, there's the 
there you go. It's giant. It's like two feet by two feet, basically. So, well, and that's actually the design size. So with, you know, the frame and stuff, it's probably more like 26 by 26. But yeah, it's done. I'm very proud. I ha I've had this done since like, I don't know, May? April sometime and I just happened to actually FFO'd it but here it is in her fully framed glory. Okay, set this back down. Oh geez, I don't have a place to put this in. <laughs> there we go. Alright, I probably should have backed up the camera a little bit so you could actually see what I was showing. Um, Alright, so the next thing that I have is some haul. So I ordered a couple charts from Farmer's Attic on Etsy because um, she was having like a Christmas sale type thing and I got a station, well, I can't talk, Stacy Nash Primitives um, Rabbit Hollow Farm. I've loved this one and I think I need more spring stuff. I really don't have a lot of spring stitching for some reason. I tend to do like Christmas and Halloween and like everything else is just, you know, like not really seasonal. Um, but I really love this one, so I want to do this, um, sometime to have some more, you know, spring-themed stuff. And then I picked up the last of the Sunday Stitches charts, um, which is Great is Thy Faithfulness. I love this rose. And I don't, I have a lot of these charts, I don't have all of them, um, mostly because, um, I kind of just picked the ones that, you know, the hymns that were like my favorite and that I liked the most. I didn't get every single one of them. Uh, but I think I have, I don't know, like seven or eight of them now. Uh, so I, I do want to stitch those. I want to stitch all of this, but yeah, I, I love these guys. I do want to start one of these, in, uh, this year. I think the one that I have picked out is like a kid, like I can kid it up for one of my Withgo rewards is um, Abide With Me because that's like my favorite one out of all of them. I love that hymn so much, so I'm excited for that. I almost did like a, um, when she first came out with this last year, I almost did like, oh, well, I'll just do one a month type thing, but that's just a lot and it's kind of funny because I told myself I wouldn't have a sal this year because I feel like sals to me take up a lot of time because I like to stay try to stay on track with them and that does take up lots of stitching time and I realize I'm completely doing a sal with Esther Blackwood now which you know I don't know I can't, can't resist apparently because like last year I made myself not do the modern folk embroidery uh, fruits of plenty sal. I made myself not do their mystery sal this year or the linen, I think linen and threads is doing one too, um, but I still ended up with the sal. Oops, um, but you know, it's fine. It'll get done eventually. Uh, the next thing that I have is, I said this last time, but um, for my birthday in February, I wanted to do a Bristol Berry birthday. Um, and so, again, y'all are totally welcome to join in on that. I'll probably start a little hashtag on Instagram for it. But I had this chart I already had, Bristol Berries 3. I didn't have the first two, though. And so I went and I ordered... Uh, Bristol Berries 1 and 2 from Erica Michaels. So now I have all three of these uh, charts. 1, 2, and 3. And I ordered... Oop, I ordered... I ordered, um, what, like six skeins of cranberry and some 40 count uh, just white linen from Swigart. So this will be really pretty. This is what I'm planning to stitch uh, the berries on. I hope this is enough fabric. I don't know that it, I don't know. I got a fat quarter. I'm hoping that's enough for like, how many berries is this? That's like, they're two in one and then there's three in the other two, so that's eight berries total. I think that would be enough for eight of them, especially because it's 40 count, because I'm sure they'll be pretty small on 40 count. Um, 
We'll see. I can always get more white so I guard linen and it's not like, you know, I didn't pick a hand dyed fabric or anything, so it shouldn't be an issue if I do run out. But I am super excited about that. And I'm trying to, I really don't want any more whips than I currently have. And so, you know, this works out because basically, um, I'll, pro I'll probably treat this as like one whip, even though it's three different charts, because it's just, you know, have a Bristol Berry going, essentially. Um, but what, how this works out well, though, is because since my whip go goal for my songs of the season is to finish, um, is to finish it hopefully I'll have that finished and then I can start this to take its place so that's kind of my goal this year is to either ideally finish two things for every one thing that I start ideally I'm not committing to that but ideally and at the very least at least finish something before I start that way I want to make sure I leave room for like a new year new start next year um, so I want to have like 23 whips going into 2023 maybe hopefully um that way uh, that way i can you know have a new year new start and have 24 whips exactly for my whip go board so we'll see although i don't know i also didn't put esther blackwood on my, on my whip go board because i considered her my new year new start so even though i actually started her on the 26th of december i like wrote her down as being started on January 1st because she's my new year and you start. So she's not part of like, you know, my whips coming with me, I guess, into this year to me. I, I don't know. I started her before I started that Sterling Estates kit, but you know, my mind works in mysterious ways sometimes. <laughs> okay, I have the rest of the Kitten Stitcher advent to show you guys as well. So I opened the last of this before I left, and I will share that with you guys. And I don't remember what days these were, so I'm sorry, but this is probably like, I don't know, 19 through 25, I think, days of the advent. Um, the first one was um, this chart by Kathy Barrick. Merry Christmas. Was it Merry Christmas Wishes? It has this sweet little Christmas tree with these little, um, I don't know what you call them, flower, Quaker flower type designs on them. And look, these little adorable little reindeer. I would actually really like this in a different color palette. Like if you did um, the tray and the reindeer in more of like a gold and then did the flowers and uh, stuff in like a real like holiday red color, I think that would be really pretty. The next thing that I have is Plum Street Samplers, and this is super cute. This is called Yuletide Delivery. You can see a little Santa on his sleigh there. These cute little trees in the background. This is adorable. This is my first Plum Street Sampler. I said the last time when I uh, when I had gone to Tim Smith's Wife, I was looking, and I love so many of the Plum Street Sampler charts, but I just. I know, for whatever reason, I didn't have any, but now I have one, thanks to the advent. But yeah, that's really cute. Okay, the next thing that I have is from Needlework Press. This is H. Purdy 1822. And this is just kind of one of those that I would consider like a basic sampler, you know, just like very basic, a little, little bit of border mostly alphabet and numbers and everything with just like a name it does have some eyelet eyelet stitches um in this bottom border right here but besides that it's just you know very plain little cross stitches which i i like i wanted i don't want to have a lot of these types of samplers but i don't have one yet so this will probably be the chart that i choose to just be my like you know basic little next thing that I have is Stone Street Stitchworks and this is I love the border on this one this is called Peace and Goodwill and look at that border that's a magnificent border <laughs> love the little house but I mm, the border look at the border super cute 
And then the last thing in this one, I do remember it was the 25th. This is a Hands Across the Sea. And it's called Emily Wildhack 1874. And here she is. Let me try and zoom in on that. Super adorable. And it doesn't, it uses a decent amount of colors for the size, but it's only like 13 different colors. It's not too bad. I think it's just all cross stitches. It's, it's really cute though. I like the colors. They're very, um, I don't know, in a way they're kind of very springy, but they're also very like holiday-like. There's a lot of green and red, but there's also this like really pale blue and um, like pale purpley color as well. So yeah, super cute. I might have to start this sometime. We'll see. Uh, okay, that is all of my cross stitch that I've been doing. I do have a crochet and a knitting whip to show you guys. So. The first, I took this with me on my trip too, and this was the old Tide Blanket from Attic 24. I've loved working on this. This is my first crocheted object um, that I've done or am in the process of doing. I just finished the 50th, um, the 50th round out of, uh, out of 85 total, including the, uh, the border, so. The last time I, sh I'm not going to unfold this. The last time I showed you guys this, I had, I think, gotten to this dark red right here. And so I did another gold, this light green, dark green, and then this um, pale goldy color up here. So I did another four rows on this guy. It's getting big. It's getting pretty, uh, you know, hefty. It's getting legit blanket sized. My goal is to finish this before next Christmas <laughs> again. And you know, it's funny because so many people, my husband and my dad were like, that doesn't look Christmassy. It looks like an Aztec blanket or something or like an Indian blanket. And you know, I was like, I was like, I think it's Christmassy. Like it, like, yeah, it's colorful, but you know, it's like, I don't know, to me it's like vintage Christmas, you know, just kind of like scrappy, all different colors, but it definitely has like a vibe of like lots of greens, lots of reds, blues even, it's just, I don't know, to me it's Christmassy. And I was like, y'all, it's called Yuletide Blanket, how can that not be Christmas? But I like it, so you know, I was just like, well, I mean, when y'all are cold, then y'all, you know, y'all can just freeze and I'll have my nice, you know, I don't know, southwestern blanket to cuddle with during Christmas then. <laughs> but yeah, I, I really like it and I am enjoying crocheting a lot. The next thing that I was working on is um, Campside Cardi and I'll put a picture of that in here. It's by Alicia Plummer. I don't have the, the like, um, why am I blanking on the word? The like little label on the yarn, but it's basically, it's just like super wash merino wool. And it's like, it's a, it's black, but it's also kind of greeny. I don't know if you can really see that, but yeah, it's kind of, it's a weird, like blacky green color, which I, I really like. I actually got this for a different project but it wasn't quite it looked more green online and so it's not really the color that I wanted for that project so I decided okay well I'll find something else to make with it then and I picked out campsite cardi for that I haven't done that much I've just done like um just I don't know maybe like 10 rows or something but it's on my needles it's all curled up because it's all stock in that stitch but uh if you uncurl it it's like you know just like a little inch of work and Guys, I got one of these at Hobby Lobby. These little things. These are amazing. It's like um, like a row tracker. Oh, come on, focus. But yeah, so you can put this like on your needle or something, and you can just you know crank. You move the sides to change um, to change like the number. I wish this would focus. 
but you can move the sides to change the number and also on this side too. And it's so nice because like I'm right now I'm doing 29 rounds of the same thing and it's so nice because I can just, you know, it's on three right now. It's on three right now, so I can just put it on three. You can stick it, um, you can just like put it on your needle like that. And I've been keeping mine just like on the, um, on this part of the needle. And now I know whenever I pick it up, I can just look at that and be like, okay, I just did round three and go on. I don't have to like, in the past I had done it by like writing and marking off my rounds on like paper, which is fine, but if you lose the paper, it's um, bad news bears because then you gotta like go back and count all of your rows and try and figure try and figure out where the heck you were before um, before you lost the paper, which totally didn't happen to me one time. One hundred percent not talking from experience there. Um, so yeah, I really liked that. That's a really good um, little thing. I also got I didn't bring them with me, but I got some of those like clover clips, you know for sewing, uh, so you, instead of like doing the whole like pin thing, they're just little, you know, little clips. You can just clip your fabric together. Cause I saw um, Elizabeth Ann can stitch on her project bag tutorial. She used those and I was like, I need to try those. Cause I am not a pin person. Like I use pins, but I also stab myself with pins a lot. So I was like, okay, I need to try some, you know, non dangerous alternatives to that. Uh, so yeah, I think that is it though. It's just a few little like gadgets at the end that I guess I have have tried or am going to try. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys had a great Christmas. I hope you guys have a great New Year. Happy 2022. It was really funny actually because we I, I stayed up for the New Year. Me and my husband, we were up. And like I was gonna do the whole like countdown thing and be like, you know, yeah, three, two, one, woo, you know, 2022. I, I I don't know. It was a weird night because it didn't feel as late as it was to me. And I don't know why. I don't know if I just got like a good sleep the night before or something. But I started reading a book. And I just kept reading. And all of a sudden, I looked up at the clock and it was 12.04. And I was like, crap, I missed it. Um, I literally just uneventfully read straight through midnight. <laughs> So, I mean, I mean, it's fine, like I was, you know, it, it was just kind of funny to me. Um, I, I hope 2022 goes that uneventfully for um, for me, honestly. Like if, if that's an indication of how 2022 is gonna go, I'm totally fine with that. Um, but yeah, so let me know if you did anything special for Christmas or if you did anything cool for New Year's or you, know, you guys like, do some fun celebrations, fireworks. Uh, just let me know what you guys did the past couple weeks. I'd love to hear about it. And again, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening to my rambling for 33 minutes now. And yeah, I hope you guys have a great new year. See you guys in another two weeks.